Hello Set Apart Saints, this is David, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the man of sin of 2 Thessalonians 2. And if you haven't done so, I recommend watching the previous videos in this Revelation series so that the explanation is in context. If you're benefiting from the videos, please like them, make comments, and share them so that YouTube lists them for others to learn. If you want more information about the fulfillment of Revelation, the Revelation Timeline Decoded book provides it in detail, and I've included that link in the video description. In my previous video, I showed how the office of the papacy, the popes of Rome, fulfill prophecy as the son of perdition who pretends to lead Messiah's church, thus he sits in the temple of God. The popes have proclaimed to be God, to be Jesus Christ in the flesh, to forgive sins, and to provide salvation, all of which is blasphemy. In this video, I'll show you many examples of how the popes, the professed leader of Messiah's church, cause people to sin, fulfilling the role of the man of sin. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And I covered the falling away in a previous video, so if you want that explanation, just look at the previous videos. But people proclaim that the son of perdition, the man of sin, will be a sinful atheist. But many people do that, so there's really nothing outstanding about that. What Paul is proclaiming is that the son of perdition pretends to be a leader of Messiah's ecclesia of saints, his church, which is the temple of Yah, our Heavenly Father. So the true temple that Paul's talking about is filled up with the ecclesia of saints. And that's the temple that he's pointing to. Again, I covered this in my last video. If he's talking about a physical temple, the physical temple in Jerusalem was standing at the time that he wrote 2 Thessalonians 2, so he'd have been talking about that temple, but he's not. The, so the son of perdition teaches false man-made doctrine and causes people to sin. Messiah warned us to beware of false prophets, fake priests, whose fruit reveals that they are wolves in disguise. It says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Paul described the popes of Rome and their wicked works of Satan. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all the power and signs and lying wonders. The apostle John declares this about keeping the commandments. He that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. So any leader of Messiah's Ecclesia of Saints should strive to obey the Father's commandments and teach others to do the same out of love for Yah's gift of salvation. And keep in mind that the popes have declared themselves to be infallible, without error in their doctrine and commands. And when I was writing the Revelation Timeline Decoded book and the Spirit caused me to make a list of the ways that the popes have caused people to sin, I was amazed. Uh, the title of the men of sin became clear. And there is no other person who could fulfill it other than the popes of Rome. They pretend to represent Messiah, but their doctrine and commands are anti-Messiah. The biggest sin that the popes commit is misleading Catholics with the false salvation message of works through the sacraments and that Mary is the intercessor to the Father. This has caused billions of Catholics to believe that they were part of the true church, but to die in their sins if they did not believe in Messiah's atoning work alone. So what an evil strategy of Satan to cause the popes to teach concepts that replace the true scriptural faith with a false religion. Instead of being saved through faith, through Messiah alone, most Catholics follow a false religion, which leaves them guilty of their sins and they are condemned. And I'm not saying all Catholics are not saved. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, Messiah said, come out of her, come out of the harlot of Babylon. Today, 1.3 billion Catholics revere which is the mark on the forehead, and obey, which is the mark on the right hand actions, the Antichrist beast Pope, so they have the mark of the beast on them. The Pope said, proclaim to be God, which breaks the first commandment, right? That says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And so Pope Leo said, being the supreme teacher in the church is the Roman pontiff. Union of minds, therefore, requires, together with a perfect accord in one faith, complete submission and obedience of will to the church and to the Roman pontiff as to God himself. And they've made, a, made other quotes. I'm just kind of summarizing in this video. The Heavenly Father declared that you should have no other gods. The popes make and pray to idols of Mary, the Catholic saints, which breaks the second commandment about not making or bowing to idols. Catholics have idols in their churches and their homes. They bow to statues of Mary and pray to her. To cover over this overt sin, the popes caused the Catholic Church to remove the second commandment and split the tenth into two, so they have ten. 
and even the crucifix is an idol and an evil one at that. The New Testament was written in Greek, so we have to look at the Greek representation of 600, three score, and six, so 666. The Strong's Greek Dictionary words are chai, zai, stigma. Chai has a numerical value of 600. It's an abbreviation for Christ. Zai has a numerical value of 60. It's an abbreviation letter for Zulon, which is a beam from which anyone is suspended across. Stigma is a ligature of the Greek letters sigma and tau. Sigma has the numerical value of six, and it means a hole or mark pierced with a pointed instrument on the hands. The plural is stigmata, pointing to the nails that affix Messiah to the cross. So 666, Chai Zai Stigma, points to the crucifix of the Antichrist beast popes and their harlot church. But it has a more sinister meaning. We celebrate that Messiah died on the cross and then rose again. right? So Galatians 3.13 says, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. The Pope keeps him on the cross, which openly curses him and mocks him. So it's saying, yeah, you're cursed when you're on the cross, but the Pope keeps him there. He's not there. He's risen. He's in heaven interceding for us as our high priest. The Pope, who proclaims to be our high priest on earth, keeps Messiah on the cross and that openly curses and mocks him. The 666 crucifix is displayed in Catholic churches worldwide where they carry out their Babylonian mystery religion during the blasphemous Eucharist ceremony in front of a crucifix that mocks our Messiah. Popes, including Francis, use the bent cross, which features a repulsive and distorted figure of Messiah hanging on it, mocking Messiah even more. Google the phrase Pope bent cross and you'll see what it looks like. So do you see what the number 666 means? It's mocking Messiah right in plain sight. The popes had people call them the Holy Father, breaking the third commandment. Scripture says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Catholic priests are called Father, which also takes the Father's name in vain. Messiah said to call no religious leader by the title of Father. So he wasn't pointing to, obviously, our physical Father. He's pointing to people who are uh, religious and leaders. Do not call them Father. And here's a list of other blasphemous titles, which the popes have assigned to themselves, which belong only to the Heavenly Father. His Holiness, Most Blessed Father, Vicar of God, Substitute God is what that means, God on Earth, and the True God. The popes have used Catholics to murder the saints, causing them to break the Sixth Commandment. And they've issued commands to this effect. Anyone who attempts to construe a personal view of God which conflicts with the Catholic Church dogma must be burned without pity. The lords of the district shall carefully seek out the heretics in dwellings, hovels, and forests, and even their underground retreats shall be entirely wiped out. They relentlessly try to eliminate the two witnesses against them, the scriptures and the saints. The popes caused Catholics to torture and kill tens of millions of saints whom they deemed heretics during the Dark Ages of the Inquisition. The cruel torture devices that they use are the most barbaric made by man. And you can Google the phrase Catholic torture devices to see their horrendous inventions. The popes made themselves rich with the collection of indulgences, stealing the wealth of Catholics, which breaks the Eighth Commandment. They caused Catholics to believe that they can purchase forgiveness of sins and salvation, giving Catholics a license of sin. By this deception, the popes have stolen the wealth of widows who are trying to save their loved ones who have died and sparing them time from purgatory. They funded the building of St. Peter's Basilica, their gaudy, ornate temple, which brings a physical reality to them sitting in, as a god in the temple. And they caused Catholics to steal the homes and positions of saints whom they had killed. The popes have borne false witness by proclaiming that people are heretics because they disagree with their false teachings, which breaks the ninth commandment. The pope's condemnation of the saints were false as they were born out of their evil thoughts. Their false witness against the scriptures was pure evil, and they tried to keep the saints from learning the truth. The popes heaped scornful curses at the saints, accusing them of being heretics, a curse, the children of the devil, and the spawn of hell. The popes venerate skulls and bones in cathedrals and crypts. St. Mondidas skull is found in a side altar at St. Peter's Church in Munich. Catholics revere her every year with a high mass. In Portugal, there's a chapel with 5,000 skeletons, including two desiccated corpses, one of which is a child dangling from a chain. They make prayers to dead saints, but Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 11 forbids necromancy, communication with the dead. The popes bane and burden the scriptures and prohibited lay people from reading them. They deny the word of Yah, as they have repeatedly forbidden Bible reading, as it testifies to salvation by faith in Messiah, not by works through the papal church.
Pope Innocent III decreed, we prohibit laymen possessing copies of the Old and New Testament. We forbid them most severely to have the above books in the popular vernacular. They only allowed the priests to read the scriptures in Latin so the people couldn't understand. Pope Pius IV said, the Bible is not for the people. Whoever will be saved must renounce it. It is a forbidden book. Bible societies are satanic contrivances. Pope Innocent III declared, as it has been clearly shown by experience that if the Holy Bible in the vernacular is generally permitted without any distinction, more harm than utility is thereby caused. The Catholic Church burned William Tyndale at the stake after killing him and dug up Wycliffe's bones and burned them. Why? Because Tyndale and Wycliffe translated the scriptures into English so that people could read them. How wicked is that? Yah, our Heavenly Father, had the Bible written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. The Papal Church only taught in Latin so that they could hide what Scripture is proclaiming. They don't forbid Bible reading now because Yah used the advent of the printing press and Bible societies to spread Bibles all over the world, so they can't stop it now. Instead, they've been instrumental in creating modern Bibles that remove words and change the meanings to fit their teachings. The popes condone the stealing, killing, and destroying of the Society of Jesus. The Jesuits murdered kings and presidents who opposed them. They have stolen the wealth of nations. They have set up a Rothschild central bank and almost every nation to control the money supply and steal the people's wealth. The popes cause Catholics to make repetitive prayers during Mass and while praying the Rosary. The liturgy of Roman Catholic services is repetitive recitations. Pope Pius VII said, Every day as the church herself recommends, priests will recite the Holy Rosary, which by proposing for our mediation the mysteries of the Redeemer, leads us to Jesus through Mary. Matthew 6, 7 says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they shall think that they be heard for their much speaking. The popes have proclaimed that salvation is only through them. Pope Pius XII said, We recognize the Holy Catholic Roman Church to be the only true church of Jesus Christ, outside of which neither sanctity nor salvation can be found. Call them to the unity of the onefold, granting them the grace to believe every truth of our holy faith and to submit themselves to the supreme pontiff, the vicar of Jesus Christ on earth. The Bible says that salvation is through faith in Messiah alone. The popes have proclaimed that Mary is sinless. Pope Paul II said, Preserved free from all guilt of original sin, the Immaculate Virgin was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory upon the completion of her earthly sojourn. She was exalted by the Lord as Queen of the Universe, for the Mother of Christ is glorified as the Queen of the Universe. Pope Pius IX also said, The Blessed Virgin Mary to have been, from the first instant of her conception, by a singular grace and privilege of Almighty God, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind, preserved free from all stain and original sin. But Romans 3.23 says, For all men, including Mary, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The popes have proclaimed that Mary saves people. Pope Pius XI said, What will it cost you, O Mary, to hear our prayer? What will it cost you to save us? Has not Jesus placed in your hands all the treasures of the grace and mercy? You sit crowned queen at the right hand of your son. Your dominion reaches as far as the heavens, and you are subject to the earth and all creatures dwelling thereon. Your dominion reaches even down into the abyss of hell, and you alone, O Mary, save us from the hands of Satan. But John fourteen six says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The popes have proclaimed that Mary is the mediator to the Father. Pope Leo the Thirteenth said, O Holy Mother of God, to thee we lift our prayers, for thou, powerful and merciful, art the mediatrix of our salvation. With equal truth, it may be said that of the great treasury of all graces given to us by our Lord, for grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, nothing comes to us except through Mary's mediation, for such is God's will. Thus, as no man goes to the Father but by the Son, so no one goes to Christ except through his mother. Pope Leo XIII said, O Virgin Most Holy, none abounds in the knowledge of God except thee. None, O Mother of God, obtains salvation except through thee. None receives a gift from the throne of mercy except through thee. Pope Pius IX said, God has committed to her the treasury of all good things, in order that everyone may know that through her are obtained every hope, every grace, and all salvation. For this is his will that we obtain everything through Mary. Pope Pius X said, if it is impossible to separate what God has united, it is also certain that you cannot find Jesus except with Mary and through Mary. Pope Benedict the Fifteenth said, To such extent that Mary suffer and almost die with her suffering and dying son, 
To such extent did she surrender her maternal rights over her son for man's salvation, that we may rightly say she redeemed the human race together with Christ. But Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So the popes deny Messiah his rightful place by assigning his attributes of mediator, advocate, and redeemer to Mary, fulfilling 1 John 2.22, who was a liar. But he who the denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Antichrist, the denier, the Father, and the Son. So they're denying Messiah his rightful place. They're denying the Father by having people call them Holy Father. First Timothy 2, 5-6 to says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. The popes have proclaimed that forgiveness is through them. Pope John Paul II said, Don't go to God for forgiveness, come to me. Hebrews 2.17 says, Therefore, in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. The popes prohibit priests and nuns from marrying. This mandate has led to rampant homosexuality, rape of nuns, abortions, and pedophilia. 70% of Catholic priests are reportedly homosexual. The Roman Catholic Church has paid out over $3 billion in settlements to child rape cases, and that's just the cases that have been won. No other church denomination would get away with raping so many children. But since the Catholic Church holds sway with police, judges, etc., priests are rarely convicted of a crime and they're just moved to another parish. If a regular person rapes a child, they go to prison, but not Catholic priests. Catholic priests raping boys in Messiah's name accomplishes many things. Firstborn sons are set apart for the father, so violating them corrupts them. Satan loves that. Many of these boys turn away from the Heavenly Father and Messiah because their supposed representative, the Catholic priest, harm them. Many of these boys become homosexuals, they switch sexes, and they commit suicide. Catholic priests corrupt the minds of youth. In the book, 50 Years in the Church of Rome, former Catholic priest Charles Chinique said that during confessionals, the priests ask innocent children questions about things that they had never thought of before, such as about masturbation, sexual thoughts about the opposite sex, etc., which then pervert their minds to think about those things. So, as you can see, the Roman Catholic Church has a counterfeit high priest, the Pope, a counterfeit mediator, Mary, a counterfeit communion, the Eucharist, a counterfeit ritualistic church service, and a counterfeit gospel of works. How can all these things not describe the man of sin that the Apostle Paul is describing? We can see it fits right in the context of the falling away, the man of sin rising up at the, after the last Western Roman emperor was removed in 476. We see the fulfillment of the man of sin. He's causing Catholics to sin. It's just all very clear when you see it in the proper context. In the next video, I'll show you how Revelation 17 is describing the harlot church of the man of sin, the Antichrist, beast popes, the Roman Catholic Church. Love y'all. Shalom.